It's time for Cash Plays, where we turn bustos into robustos. Brought to you by StackEmCoaching.com. Rethink poker. And now, your hosts, John Kim and Joe Tihan. Hey, what's going on, guys? All the listeners out there, what's going on, Joe? Hey, what's up, John? This is Cash Plays on Quadjax.com, brought to you by StackumCoaching.com. Use promo code Quadjax82 for a free three-day trial. And I guarantee you that you'll learn plenty over there to improve your poker game and hopefully get you robusto, especially if you're busto. I don't know where that term came from, busto to robusto. Yeah, I don't, I don't quite get it. I mean, I get it, but <laughs> I, I never really used it. I don't like it all that much. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's just the terminology lingo I saw on 2 Plus 2 from guys that, I mean, it happens a lot in the poker world, right, Joe? Guys that go broke, come back, get back on their feet, go broke again. It's like a cycle. Yeah, I mean, you see it all the time. Um, I've seen it with a lot of a lot of guys who just, like, win big tournaments and um, and they just go up and play like the biggest games in the world and like whatever it is. I mean, guys just always want to play bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, it's positive variance and gets to their head a little bit and uh, they just feel like they're on top of the world. They can beat anything. Yeah, uh, I mean, I part, you know, part of me, I really wish that I had that kind of gamble still in me. Um, I, I kind of do envy like a lot of the, like the younger guys who like, win a tournament and they just go play in the biggest games, you know, I, I really do, I kind of wish I had that more so in me, like when I first started playing, I did, and now it's just, now I've You did become, the opposite, that's kind of interesting, I'll just bring it up to people that are listening, you actually went the opposite direction, when you won your million dollars in a WPT um, a few years back, when I met you, you are playing 200, 400, Limit games. I mean, I dabbled in them too at the time at Bellagio 100, 200 limit hold'em, stuff like that. And then you win a million bucks in a tournament, and then you don't play higher than like 40, 80 <laughs> I mean, limit after that. For, yeah, for a <laughs> while I did that. I was playing big. Like the night before that tournament started, I had probably my biggest loss ever. Uh, it actually was my biggest loss ever. Uh, I lost like 36,000 playing. Um, the combination that was like 200, 400, and 400, 800, and uh, yeah, it was a bad night. And I remember you had to wake me up the next day and talk to me into going to play that tournament. So yeah, um, it always before. But yeah, before. like <laughs> you know, I'm kind of envious of a lot of the guys who just you know they win. So maybe it's me just kind of being a nit. I don't know. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you, what was your mentality? I mean, most people win a million bucks. And you had like almost pretty much all your action. You weren't staked at the time. So, I mean, you just won like a cool million. What was your mentality after? Like you're saying, most young guys would jump into the biggest no limit games, 100, 200 NL, uh, 1K, 2K limit games. But instead, you did the exact opposite. It's just kind of, I find it fascinating. It goes against the grain of most poker players. I mean, poker players are still like human beings. And I guess as a human, just kind of human nature... Uh, you just want to, I mean, my goal in playing poker is to, you know, create, like, be comfortable, like, have it, provide myself and my family with a comfortable living, um, and I've done that, and, like, but, like, you know, once you get that big score, you're like, whoa, whoa, I want to take a step back, like, I don't want to be gambling for, like, 20, 30,000 every day, like, and plus it's kind of, you know, it's it's tough on you mentally, it doesn't matter how much money you have, I mean, you're never really going to have enough money where you're going to go and be comfortable losing like 30000 in a day. I mean, not many people Even have that kind of money. <laughs> Even if you have a million bucks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's when, you know, it's it's funny because people ask me about tilt and about losing and, and things like that. And it's like, I'm never going to be happy going and playing and, and like, losing 5k in a day or 10k in a day whatever it is like i'm never going to be happy about it and i guess the only time you'll be content with it is like you know if my bankroll was like 
you know, 20, 30 million, like I wouldn't mind it. You know, it wouldn't be that big, big of a deal. But for most people, it's just, you know, I mean, the, that money, you could have found better things to do with it than lose it on a poker table. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, but that's your job, your livelihood. So I'm kind of surprised you didn't. I mean, I, I can't really say because I'm kind of, I did the same thing. But, I mean, I was in a different situation. I mean, I had a family. I have a family. So I, you know, when I won 250K on party poker back then, in a, in a single day in a tournament, I just pretty much invested all of it. Didn't really shot take. So, yeah. I mean, I kind of see where you're coming from. But, again, like you were single back then. You're young, single. So I just find that little. I mean, I did play some big. I played some like six and twelve hundred and four and eight, like. But yeah, for the most part, I just kind of backed down a little bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with what you did, but I do think one thing: like kids nowadays, they win big and they think they're invincible, and yeah, too many of them end up playing way too big over their head, even with the big score, like a 300, 400K score, and within a year later, they're back to Busto. Yeah, I always, uh, think, the, of, I always think of Tuan Lee. Like, he was just, he was the man. I mean, he would, like, win a <laughs> tournament, and he would just go and play, like, the biggest games. I mean, I, he was, he's great. I love him, <laughs> you know. But he was a super actually, gambler. Yeah, there's actually a thread called Where Are They Now? It's a pretty popular thread. Um, and his name was mentioned. So the key word you said was, was well, where is he now? What's he up to? Um, I don't know. I, or? I haven't seen him in a while. But I, I mean, I've seen him like maybe a, a year ago in, in L.A. I saw him, and he was still playing uh, in the big games. I don't know if it was his money or someone else's, but, you know, he was still in the games. Okay. So. All right, well, I guess we cover enough Busto to Robusto and back and yeah. whatever. But, uh, we'll try not to go Busto. Hopefully nobody out there listening goes Busto. Robusto is a much better spot to be in. But um, <laughs> all right, so let's get to some poker stuff, some actual real poker strategy. Um, you've been playing live. I've been grinding online. Well, you just said yeah. you started playing live because um, you're still pretty much a new dad. So that's like a full-time job. I know how it is, yeah. uh, especially week one. <laughs> A lot of restless nights. So I wanted to ask you, what are you playing? PLO, was it? Like 5-5, five, 5-10? Five, five, yeah, still playing the 5-5 five, five, uh, with the straddle uh, PLO game. I love it. It's half, and half high, half low. Um, yeah, I don't think we talk enough PLO. Um, I mean, we cover the ins and outs of No Limit Hold'em like to death sometimes. But PLO is a game we don't talk enough about. And next week, <clears throat> we're actually going to have a... Uh, PLO expert. I think he's a deuces crack coach too. Coaches PLO. Um, friends with Ben Lamb. Really good at PLO. So unfortunately, we don't have him on today. But I wanted to ask you about a recent PLO hand you played. I was going to talk about one I played online, but I think yours is way more interesting. Um, it's you want to uh, talk about the PLO hand we're talking about? I thought it was pretty fascinating. Yeah, I, I actually, uh, I just told this hand to John. Um, I just remembered it. I played it like uh, a week or two ago, or like two weeks ago. Um, but it was really an interesting hand because it's more of like an idea of trying to betting, um, trying to accomplish what you want to accomplish. Like, so I was, I, we were playing PLO high and I'm under the gun. Uh, there was no straddle in this hand, which is pretty rare, but anyways, so the blinds are five, five, five. Um, and I'm under the gun playing PLO high and I have ace, ace, three, six, uh, with no suits. So... Not the greatest PLO hand by any means, but it's still, you know, aces are aces. So um, I decide to make a, a min raise. Like, so I just made made it $10, just hoping to, you know, build up a pot a little bit. Um, I make it $10 under the gun. Now under the gun plus one makes it $45. And now it goes call, 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 call. And the small blind calls as well. So, like, everyone normally would be thinking this is perfect, but um, see, if I were to repot it there, like, I was sitting about 4K deep, and most of the guys in middle position all had at least, or somewhere around 2K. Um, you know, and, and some guys had about 3, 4, 5K, whatever. But so, so everyone's, five, like, relatively yeah. deep. So five five blinds, so you guys are all like four hundred BBs plus D. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, That's... you know, most most of the times the game does play with a straddle. So, so anyways, five five. I'm in raise to ten. 
Under the gun plus one makes it 45. Uh, we get three callers plus the, plus the small blind also calls. And it's back to me. Um, so there's 45 times six in the pot. Um, and if, if I were to repot there, I'm going to get five callers again or six or whatever it is. I, I mean, I don't think anyone's going anywhere. Um, everyone's so if you like I said, it, that, Okay. So there's like five players times 45. So you can put in another two, uh, 200 to 250 re-raise, right? Um, I could Close probably repot to like yeah, maybe like 350, yeah. I would, I would think, okay. or three, something like that. Yeah. Um, and but anyways, like, get, yeah, not I think people. if I were to repot, like, and my hand's not really that good. I, you know, I have yeah, no suits or anything. And my other I, two I think, cards aren't very playable. So, yeah, I think it's a lesson go for, not to interrupt you really quick, but a good lesson for no limit players transitioning to PLO is Aces is not as cracked up to what it is in PLO that it is in no limit, especially when you have the other two cards aren't working. You always want all four cards working together somehow, or the other cards, like suited Aces or connectors, Ace Ace, 9 10, stuff like that. But yeah, you have three six off with no yeah, suited yeah. ace. And I have no but, like my hand is only good for like I don't know top set value, I guess. <laughs> like it's really okay, not so, that good. So this is where the hand gets interesting. I think most people's mentality there, like I said, I would probably just call because my aces are kind of weak. I don't want to blow up the pot. Or some people would think, okay, let me repot it, try to get heads up. Or but like some people said, think, yeah, I just have aces. I have to repot, like you right. know, and do whatever I. And now they're going to get in very, very awkward situations where they're, you know, they're another 1,800 behind or 1,700 behind or, or even deeper in spots where, you know, I mean, you're never really going to know, like, where you're at. Uh, or you can get it in, you know, behind to, like, much better draws or whatever. Like, so the hand's going to be, like, very tough right. to play unless you flop right. a set. Pretty much, ace, yeah, aces, you have to tread the waters carefully in PLO, especially out of position, especially deep. Okay, so what did you end up doing? Which I thought this was pretty cool. Um, yeah, so it, it was 10, 45, everyone calls, and it comes, comes back to me, and I could just call, but I decided um, to, I, I min re-raised to 85, um, or 35 more, I, so I made it 80. Um, just hoping to, like, reopen the door um, in case anyone does want to spaz out or in case, you know, I mean, I still do have aces, so I still am trying to, hopefully I can get a lot of money in preflop. Um, and, again, if everyone just calls 80, oh, well, I'm probably going to have to check fold the flop anyways. Like, my hand's not very good, but it, I'm giving everyone a chance to, like, possibly spaz out you know they might see a lot of dead money in there and they might like do something pre-flop so yeah I mean, if they have a hand like seven eight nine ten a guy might just decide to try to pick up all the dead money out there and even if called he knows his hand plays fairly well or if guy has queens or kings you know yeah, yeah. So, so that's what happened i'm in re-raised to 85 and now it goes call 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 again <laughs> and now the small blind the last caller he now pots it to like um, five, I don't know, 500 something or whatever it was for, I think it was 490 more maybe or, or something like that. Um, he potted it and, you know, it comes back to me and now now I can like get in a lot of money pre-flop with aces, which, which was the goal. So now I can repot up to like 1800 or something. Um, or I repotted to like 1700. Now everyone else got out of the way. And the guy ended up calling. He had uh, double suited kings. He had like, or uh, maybe single suited kings. It was like king, king, six, seven or something. Um, and, you know, that was the interesting part of the hand. The rest of the hand, we had like 2500 left. And uh, the, he had king, king, six, seven. The flop comes seven, five, four. And I had a say six three, so so you end up pretty convenient. Right? Right. Yeah, my my useless six three ended up uh, <laughs> playing pretty well in that hand. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that was I was saying. You want cards that work together, even though six three is not really working together. But I mean, it's still a little bit of potential. Um, yeah. But that, but yeah, like I, I thought that was pretty fascinating that you took like the outside the box approach, and min three bet um, to open up the betting. 
Yeah. And then you got exactly what you wanted, and the guy ended up uh, potting it. And, you, and that's what you want to do with aces. In yeah, Omaha, but still, I mean, I think the important part to up. the important part to mention is like, even after I re-raise to eighty, I'm still planning on check folding most flops. Like, I'm I'm still not really planning on doing anything crazy, uh, unless I flop pretty big, especially in a five or six way action pop. But luckily, I did get a heads up. And you know that that is the goal in PLO. I mean, if you can get it all in preflop with ace ace. Oh yeah, with aces. Yeah, even with crappy. Even if you have aces and like three six off. I mean, I I think there's a few spots where you're a very small underdog, like fifty two forty eight maybe. Uh, I think a guy says seven eight nine ten double suited. You might be a small dog, very small. But with all that dead money in, it's plus EV. No matter yeah. what, any hand if you can get it heads up against any four card combination with all that dead money in aces with anything it's got to be a plus EV spot and that's exactly what you accomplished no matter what the results were but uh, um, someone got, love- someone in the uh, in the chat asked what's the best starting hand in PLO high um, that's debatable I, uh, it's I, between two hands yeah I heard two different things uh, ace ace king king double suited or um, ace ace uh, jack, jack 10, 10 double, double suited double su- yeah, those are it, it, they're pretty much interchangeable, but those are the top two hands. It's not seven, eight, nine, ten, contrary to what some people might think. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten has a lot of playability post flop, and it matches up well against over pairs. But uh, in terms of like overall favorite pre flop, ace, ace, king, king, or ace, ace, jack, ten, double suited are right at the yeah. top two. Another important thing to mention, I think, in, in PLO. Um, I just kind of kind of started playing it recently, but you'll see a lot more things that you'd almost never see in Hold'em. Like um, people think, "Oh, well, I can't call off half my stack," or "I can't like do," and you know what I mean. That where in Hold'em usually, yeah, you can't call off half your stack. I mean, um, you're I almost always going to have to go yeah. with it. I said if you put in at least. Over twenty, like thirty percent or more of your stack pre, you, you should be getting it all in, or yeah, pretty much. It's a mistake to in call off thirty, them. yeah, thirty percent or more, and then fold pre flop. But I mean, PLO, I, think it's I know different. What you're at. I think it's, it's different. different. It is like completely different in PLO. No, I think it's different. Like if you're in a tournament and you have like <laughs> ten big blinds and someone three x's it, like it's okay to call off thirty percent of your stack there. Um, if you th- if you if you know, like the guy's never gonna fold pre-flop, like if, I like I think that's okay to to call there because it, you know now it gives you like an extra chance to do something with your your remaining chips. Your um, so I, yeah, I don't I don't think that's all that bad. I mean, people like always think you know oh well if I if I I can't just call I have to get it in and people always say that and it's like why like why do you have to get it in and even in tournaments I I don't think. I mean, what do you think on, about that, John? I mean, like... Don't ask me for tournament advice. You're the tournament <laughs> expert. <so. laughs> uh, uh, I mean, I know in PLO cash games, and I've been actually uh, working on my PLO cash game. I've been watching, like, Brian Hastings' PLO videos and some other guy at top high stakes players pillow videos of recent and uh I, I mean i see him i see him putting in like 30 40 percent of their stacks pre-flop and then folding and they say mplo and they're saying that's fine uh unlike no limit hold them just yeah, because yeah. you know you can you can hit a lot of flops in pillow like you know like you can put in 35 40 percent of stack with a hand like six seven eight nine and then just fold if you don't hit anything. I, I mean, I agree with you. In tournaments where survival is so essential, why would you just like stick it all in with you know like a marginal to fair holding? Yeah. Why not see like, a flop? And if you completely whiff, save your remaining sixty percent, seventy percent of your stack. E- even uh, so. like you can call sixty percent of your stack pre-flop, and then and then just just I mean you know the board can come queen deuce deuce, and like you have six seven eight nine double suited or something like. I always suggest you know save the rest of those chips. If if you if they don't do anything for you pre flop, if they don't give you any like fold equity, you're never gonna like fold the guy. Like save those chips. They you know they might be useful post flop or you know anything like that. Um, and and I I kind of suggest the same thing in no limit, but not nearly as much as PLO. PLO it's uh, it's like essential for to do that. Yeah, a lot of it. PLOs a lot of it's just flop based. Um, you know you yeah. have to connect. Like, in no limit, even if you don't hit the flop, you can still end up outdrawing someone. PLO, if you don't hit the flop, it's much harder to outdraw someone. Yeah, like you said, All a right. six, seven, eight, nine on a queen, deuce, deuce. 
Yeah. Let's uh, uh, let's let's talk about um, some of these other hands. You just sent me this PLO hand. Well, no, uh, let's skip that. Let's get to my <laughs> no limit hand really quick. Your PLO hand is uh, way more interesting. It just oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, but this first no limit hand, it's funny because you asked me, oh, yeah, what did this guy show you? Like, did you see what the guy had? Well, yeah. I, I read this it. hand. Oh. I I don't know what well, uh, there, the guy showed like, on the river. Okay, so this is a three six online hand, no limit, six max games. Uh, I'm sitting seven hundred deep, so about what one hundred twenty BBs deep. Um, cut off with one thousand opens to eighteen dollars. He's just like a standard reg. I call with kings on the button. But here's the here's the interesting thing. Just in just any poker, if there's like a bad player, you usually kind of want to bring him along. I mean, it shouldn't drive all the actions, all your decisions, but you definitely want to factor it. The reason why I flatted, and this is actually, it's not a standard flat, obviously. It's, it's, I should always be three, I don't want to say always, but, um, you know, normally you want to three bet kings on the button against the cutoff opener. But I flatted because the small blind, who I thought was somewhat of a, actually he was a fish. His stats were um, 63, 26, 15 for People that don't know what that means, he was seeing 63% of flops. His uh, opening raise percentage was 26%, and his three bet percentage was 16%. <laughs> and Joe, I mean, I, I know you've dabbled in online, but you're not as versed as I am. And you, you can even see those are like really super massive well stats, right? So, so I didn't want to three bet and blow this guy out. And he was sitting. One yeah, I was gonna say I don't. Fish. I can't remember the last time I've ever just flatted a button on or a raise on the button with kings. Like I just. I don't do it, especially from the cutoff open. Um, just because well, I three bet, I three well, bet yeah, cutoff I, opens like you know relentlessly. No, I do. So do I. I have a super wide range when I three bet the cutoff open. But I, I felt like the small blind, he he won't be able to help himself, and he's gonna squeeze like eighty percent of the time here when he sees a cutoff and button money. He just can't help himself with the sixteen percent three bet percentage. He's gonna squeeze an abnormally high amount of time. Um, so I just flatted, and I thought, uh, hopefully this guy squeezes. And right on cue, he three bets to uh, 42 bucks, the small blind. So everyone else got out of the way, and I'm like, okay, perfect. This is according, going according to plan. And I four bet to 110. And he called because that's, you know, he's got a 63% chance <laughs> of calling. This yeah. is, that's his VPIP. And the flop comes pretty good, I think, 10, 10, 8. Rainbow, a heart, spade, and a diamond. There's $268 in the pot. I, I mean, this is what a great spot. I'm in position with kings against a, a guy playing 60% of his range in a four-bet pot, and we're sitting fairly deep. He checks, yeah. and I bet 100 um, into a $268 pot. Um, again, like a lesson here is the drier the flop, the less you can bet, and you kind of want to string them along. That's what I was thinking. He calls, turns a five of spade, kind of a blank, bringing back door spades. There's 468 in the pot. I bet 185. Uh, we have like 300 left behind. He calls, so I, you know. So I mean, my bet sizing was pretty good, I think. On the river, there's 838 dollars uh, with 300 back. So I think he has to call almost any kind of like made hand. Uh, he's getting too good of a price. So on the river comes an eight. So the board is 10, 10, eight, five, eight. No flush draw. I mean, a little bit of because I don't think he ever has a 10. I think he ch check shoving the turn or check raising the flop with the 10. And I don't see many eights in his range. I'm thinking like he has like ace high, um, like ace queen or queen jack or pocket nines, pocket queen jacks. Jack, maybe. Yeah, that's what I said, queen jack. Maybe yeah, jack yeah. nine, six, seven, a bunch of hands. So I think I have to shove for value here. What do you think? I mean, is this too thin Shoving on a 10, 10, 8, 8, 5 board? I mean, too thin. The guy just check called the entire way. And you have exactly. kings. Yeah, I think this is an auto shove. So, uh, so I shove. yeah, I think an important lesson too is um, people are afraid to get like that last bit of value. Like, if you have three hundred left and there's eight hundred in the pot, like, and you have an overpair and the guy's not betting your last three hundred, like, you should almost always bet it, even if like a four flush comes or <laughs> whatever it is. I mean. Uh, no matter how scary the board is, if, if you only have 300 left and the guy didn't put you in when there's already 800 in the pot, like, you almost, you know, you're going to have the best hand there always. You you know, even if the board runs out very scary, like. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so I shoved 300, and you asked me, wow, like, did you see what his hand was after, like, he mocked? And I'm like, yeah, because the first.
freaking pot went to him. That's how I saw his oh head. My. I didn't win the damn pot. <laughs> <laughs> So right, I was so, gonna so tell I you, said, yeah, I saw his hand. The best hand. You're not. I guess you don't always have the best hand. Um, <laughs> maybe not always. <laughs> oh yeah, I saw his hand when the money was going to him. That's how I saw his hand, freaking hand. When you asked me, like, did you check his hand after he called and his hand got mucked? I'm like, yeah, because I don't win the hand. He had Jack Gate of Spades, oh. so which is pretty <laughs> brutal. Like he he flopped an eight, turned the flush draw, and then rivered eight full. So I mean, I guess that's the line he should take with the hand. But, I mean, but I mean the the reason. Yeah, a couple of points I wanted to make is sometimes like you can set up plays or players like pre flop, which I did. I just you know everything went according to what I mean. The end result wasn't good, but I mean people can just say, "Oh, had you three bet net, you wouldn't have lost eight seven hundred or whatever." The guy mm -hmm. might have folded, but yeah, that's just being results oriented. I mean, I got my money in good pretty much. Like I want, I got the situation I wanted. Um, he's not going to hit his whatever ten out or whatever going into the river uh, on the flop. He only had two outs going to the turn, picked up more equity. But most time, I want to be in that spot, so can't be results oriented. Um, yeah, and and uh, hey, I guess I retract do. my comment a little bit, but but still, I mean, you know, once he makes his full house, he should definitely put you all in on the river. Once the eight comes, um, he can't just expect you to bet. Uh, and you know, you're like calling almost always, even with like ace high hands or That's anything. That's true. So he he should always put you all in on the river. Uh, but yeah, like that's and that's right. why you should yeah, have kings. I mean. For value, obviously. <clears throat> yeah, I, I yeah, like I said, I, I, yeah, I knew that was a fairly standard value bet on my end. I just thought that he might hear a call with ace high there sometimes, like ace nine, where you turn the flush draw on the turn, or ace queen. But um, but okay, let's. <clears throat> that was my uh, weekly bad beat. <laughs> no, bad beat end <laughs> of the week. So, uh, but let's bring on Austin to crispy chef. I want to discuss some more internet poker with him. He's an internet pro. Um, his, you know, so we'll bring him on right after this commercial. Austin, what's up, man? All right, man? so today we have Austin Schaff, a.k.a. to Crispy, original G, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michigan on, alum. Guys, so. Yeah, what's going on, Austin? Okay, good. Austin has been... Not too much. Um, just a quick intro for Austin. He's... Uh, one of our original protégés, Joe and mine, for live poker at our Stackham site. Also, he's been a long-time internet grinder, um, did well in the UB days. I want to ask you that crazy story you had uh, about UB. Do you remember this, Joe, when Austin was talking about cashing out? He's going to move up to Canada to just cash out his UB money. In like 500 uh, a week had, or something? That's where you grinded most of your online play, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah unfortunately. Is that where most of your internet money was on UB? Yeah, unfortunately, I had uh, basically my entire role um, on UB. I had like just a little bit on full tilt, um, which I'm not really worried about. But I had like 15 stuck on UB, and uh, I remember, I actually remember on Black Friday, um, kids were talking about like selling their UB money, and it was going at like 65 cents on the dollar, but US people couldn't like get onto their account. And uh, like transfer, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna move to Canada, and as soon as I do, I'm gonna sell it at 65 cents on the dollar. Like, I don't care if I lose a couple k, like whatever. Like, I just want most of my roll. And then like, some news came out, and it dropped like 20 cents and 10 cents on the dollar. And then they like started limiting cash outs to 500, like every other week. And then it dropped down to 250. And I'm pretty sure I still have two pending cash outs that just never went through. And I don't like. I don't know if you've heard anything recently. I haven't heard anything. I'm just assuming the money's gone. Um, that's horrible, man. Yeah, I, kind of, I haven't kind of, heard anything about you. Yeah, that's brutal. I, I mean, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm excited. I think for you're almost drunk with, with this. Like, at least if you have. What was that? I'm sorry. What's that, John? The full tail thing. Yeah, I'm uh, like uh, I'm excited I mean, for the if, entire. Post if you have money on full tilt, at least you have some kind of semblance chance. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like, yeah, I hope everyone else gets their money. It sucks here, NB. So you didn't end up moving to Canada after all. <laughs> no, no, I did. Uh, um, I guess the lesson here was never play on UB. <laughs> yeah, oh, you did go up to Canada. Yeah, to I went up to Canada. 
Um, like five hundred a week. Yeah. Um, did that and then came to Vegas uh, for How the summer. How are you even coming out ahead? You're cashing out five hundred a week, but the cost of living up there is gonna be more. Well, the main reason I did that is to like week. get. So you're going uh, up there to like establish residency and uh, like get on my bank account and uh, money bookers and all that stuff set up so I could keep grinding. Um, and that went well. And uh, Okay, yeah. so... Uh, John, are you there? You, uh, so you're in the Michigan area. Uh, uh, I am right, I Where am right exactly now. did you go when you went to Canada? I went up to Vancouver. Yeah, I'm uh, here. Okay. Yeah, your audio is okay. kind of cut out. <clears throat> oh, okay. Um, I guess I'm having a little bit of audio problem. Okay, Joe. Uh, you, you got any internet questions from? Since I'll try to fix my audio in the meantime. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we we've been um, Austin was like our first student. We've I don't know. I um, what were we gonna do? Talk some hands with Austin, right? Um. Let's see I here. Yeah. Uh, uh, first of all, Austin. All right. Well, Austin, am I back? Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's better. better now. Can you guys? Okay. Okay. Um, so, are you going to med school, Austin? Med school. Yeah. So, once upon a time, before I discovered poker, like I discovered poker my senior year of college, um, and up until that point, I was a pre-med student and was planning on going to medical school. Um, and then I took one year off to play online poker for a living. That's turned into three years now. Um, but like with Black Friday and with everything else that's happened, um, it just seems like the right move right now to go back to school. Like I always knew it was something I was eventually going to want to do. But um, with all the stuff happening with online poker, it just seems like the perfect time to go back to school. So uh, yeah, I'm that was that was the one thing. Uh, you know, we always. Like, when we were working with Austin in the beginning, uh, we told him, you know, I mean, poker's great, and it is what it is. Um, you can make pretty good money at it, but, like, it's always going to be there. Like, if, you know, if you got, if you're working with school, like, I, I finished up and got my degree, and I think, you know, you should get your degree. and You have your master's, You can always right? go back. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, so I, I think... Yeah, I mean, I see a lot of kids nowadays that used to grind online because of Black Friday. If they didn't want to relocate, um, just, they're going back to school, and I'm all for that. I mean, I think education is very important. And so, for I those mean, it's, guys, it's not only the, the relocation, but um, I think I think I'm not the only one to say this. That in general, the games have just gotten much tougher post Black Friday. Um, it's just a lot regular, a lot. I don't know. Maybe I was just spoiled on like back in the UB days, but there was always just like massive fish at the table. Like, I, like game selection was just very easy to do, and now it's like, you know, you'll have twenty tables open, and like two might be good or three might be good. Like, I, I don't mean to discourage anyone from playing online, but um, I don't know. It's definitely not like how it used to be. That's for sure. And I, I only started back in like oh nine. I can only imagine what what it was like back in you know, oh four, oh four, oh five, oh six. Like back in the party poker golden days. It was as good as you think it, uh, it, it would be. It was, yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it was great, Austin. It's, I'm pretty much living off the profits from back then. Oh, geez, wait, money way to rub it in. Week. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> All my money was from like 2005, 2006. So, yeah. Um, so I actually, you covered exactly what I was going to ask you, what you thought the current state of games was like. Since I know you've been still dabbling online, right? Waiting to get, start med school. Uh, yeah, I've been dabbling a little bit. Um I know, like, right after the summer, um, I ran kind of deep in the main event and had a little bit of money and put some of it on party poker. And, uh, like, instantly, in my first 10K hands, um, I probably made, like, 8 or 9K at, like, 1, 2, and 2, 4. And I was like, oh, online's easy. And, like, nothing happened. You know? Black Friday, what was that? And then, uh, I don't know. Like, obviously, that was just an unsustainable heater, and I kind of, like, came back to reality, and I don't know, it's, it's just a, it's a much, like, tougher scene nowadays. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I tell Joe, like, I'm playing on Merge and stuff like that, and freaking the games are tough nowadays. Um, we just 
need to get legislation passed so we can get all the American fish back. Yeah, it's just it's so, it's too but, tough for the fish to play. So like, it's just going to be all the online pros who like will jump through hoops to keep playing, and they're just going to play against each other, and it's not going to be profitable. Like, I mean, stars might be okay. I mean, we wouldn't know since we live in the states, but yeah. stars still has a pretty big amount of games and. Um, I don't know, Joe. Have you heard like Stars is going to buy Full Tilt? So that yeah, might I, I heard about that. Um, get Full Tilt's player base, and who knows? Maybe yeah, that'll open up some doors. That, that was yeah. uh, that's some pretty exciting news. Um, like if if the word UB was thrown in there, like Stars is going to buy Full Tilt and UB, I would have been the happiest guy ever. But <laughs> uh, that was not the case. So <laughs> uh, no one's going to touch UB. Are you kidding? Yeah, UB no, is like not. the touch of death. Or, yeah. All right. So let's. Um, uh... Okay. Yeah, like, since we have Austin there, yeah, I have some internet hands I played, and I want to get your expert opinion. Since when I we care. when we started playing with when we started working with Austin, um, like Austin kind of plays kind of the way he like you know the way you would think he would play, right? He's twenty one, <laughs> like knows everything there is to know about poker. He occasionally gets caught up. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he occasionally gets caught up in like some. Maybe fancy play syndrome every once in a while. Like sometimes you just, and, and I think everyone goes through this where you just think you're too good. You think you're better than you really are. And like I, I go through the same thing. Like I think, well, I can beat this guy and it doesn't matter what my hand is, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I definitely went through a phase, especially like when I was starting to play live. Like since I would have so much time like playing each hand and like in between hands, I would just think of like the coolest, most interesting ways to play a hand. Which yeah. isn't necessarily the most profitable way. Like sometimes you just have to play it like very face up and very boring, and that's what makes you money. And I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I'm just yeah, like exactly, easy. exactly. I just can't like focus. But yeah. So that's a little preface. Yeah, to, you're. Uh, before we I start was gonna say questions. yeah. I, was gonna, I know. I, I was gonna say Austin, you're like such the prototypical internet guy. I, when you were playing live cash game, just come on and think you can outplay everybody and take like <laughs> the unoptimal line. Or, you know, just like the non standard line just to like outplay everybody. Like so, how that end up for stuff you? like that, which doesn't really matter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, it's just funny. You just think like since you're, you're a pretty successful internet cash game player, you just think you can just you know, outplay mm-hmm. everybody alive. But, um, but this is a dangerous trap to fall into. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so okay. So Joe's pretty much saying sometimes you get caught up with the little fancy place syndrome. Um, <clears throat> but okay, here's some internet hands I want to talk to you about um, that I played recently. Um, you know, I, I like going over hands. Joe likes dissecting hands. But let's just get right to it. I, uh, okay. The first hand I was playing yesterday. My brother was sweating me. He's not a poker player. He's just in town. Mm-hmm. Uh, he hasn't really watched me play much, but he just you know bored and start to check out the action. So I get involved in this hand. This is two four, and I'm playing anywhere from one two to three six. So I've got tables of various sizes. Okay. Um, and just like most American grinders, I can't play too high because we don't know uh, mm-hmm. when our account's going to get freeze. Whatever account link to my so I'm not playing as high as I normally would. But still, this two four is fairly high. You can still go on big swings. I have king jack off. In the big blind and uh, cut off. I mean, I kind of just sat down, so I don't know. But I kind of felt like cut off was kind of splashy, fishy, uh, just from a few hands I was observing. Mm-hmm. He opens to twelve. Uh, we're all like four hundred, five hundred dollars deep, so hundred BBs. Button calls, okay. and I have my HUD open, and then the button's running at fourteen, no, eighteen, fourteen, four. So you know that's pretty nitty, right? In the okay, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so eighteen, fourteen, like a standard reg would be like twenty-two, twenty. VPIP twenty-two, PFR twenty, nineteen, three bet seven or eight. He, this guy's at eighteen, fourteen, four, and uh, and obviously I want to hear what Joe will do here too. He calls twelve, and I three bet to fifty with King Jack off in the big blind, um, which is you know whatever, it's fine. I can Pretty make standard. a case for flatting there too. Yeah, I can flat also, but both guys call thirty-eight more. There's a hundred and fifty-two dollars in the pot. A flop comes king, queen, jack, rainbow. Seems like a good flop. I bet a hundred. Yeah, I bet a hundred. Cutoff goes all in for six hundred. Button cold calls all in for three hundred seventy-two. What? what do I do with kings and jacks? What? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, <laughs> that's the, what I said. The cutoff um, went all in for six hundred. The button cold calls all in for three hundred seventy-two, and it's another uh, two hundred and like 
250, 260 more back to me. Oh, the Conf I mean, one for 650, it looks like. Wait, you, you mean, said... Effective, um, effective you said, he, what stats did you have on the cutoff? Like, you, you said you thought he was fishy, but... It, it, it's fishy, so I only had a few hands. So. Yeah, I, I don't think this is even close. Like, I, I mean, I would What's call... I would call yeah. 100% of the time. It, it's, it's, it's a call, but I'm just... I'm more curious <laughs> as to, like, what the hell the button has. Yeah, the button's yeah, got you beat, like, yes, almost... Yeah. The button's got you uh, beat almost yeah. always. Or, well, I don't know. I don't know about almost always. The button's got you beat a lot. The button's got you beat a lot. I'm calling, then. Just it's you guys there. If the button's... If the button's got me, like, almost always... The guy's 18-14. He, he okay, sees okay. 18 flops. He code calls all in on a king queen jack rainbow flop. Uh, okay, I mean, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulties, but it, we'll bring like, it on Austin. Don't worry, but but yeah, he even just said like the button almost always has me beat. So why is this an easy call? Because you sh you're still gonna like beat the other guy. <laughs> Like, the other guy's <laughs> shoving, a... like, with nothing. I mean, the guy's got a pair plus straight draw or pair plus flush draw. All right. All right. So what are we beating in the, the buttons range? 18% is very low for six mag. That's, like, the tightest of ranges. And then, like, this is a three-bet pot pre. And he's, like, a standard thinking reg. It's not like he's just clicking buttons. So. I mean, okay, so what are we beating? Not much. Yeah, na name a hand we're beating in the buttons range. The cutoff, these, this is my, uh, my thoughts. The cutoff, I'm ahead of his range, no big deal, I get it all in. But once the button calls, like what am I beating in the buttons range? Um, let's go, king let's go over his hands. Let's go over his hands. He doesn't have pocket queens, pocket king. He probably doesn't have pocket jacks. I think he like back five bet shoves. Yeah, he doesn't uh, have... I, he doesn't have... Any uh, set? I don't think he would have a set. I don't think he has ace king. Um, uh, he never has king. T he never has a hand with the ten. He's not calling three hundred seventy cold with an open and straight draw. He's not. You know, there's. He's a reg. He's a standard reg. No one's calling. No regs are calling with just an open ender. That's basically what he has. It doesn't matter what his pair is because his pair is never any good against my hand. Or okay, like well, the guy we shot. lost Austin so, here, but but I I, I still. <laughs> I still don't want to talk to you about this hand. Like, you can't just say he's never, never has any of those hands. I mean, like... Yeah, I don't, I don't think he never has those hands. I don't think any competent reg is calling 372, like almost 100 BBs cold with just an open ender on a king-queen jack in a three-bet pot. Because no, he no. knows, like, he's probably up against ace-king... Aces sets a lot, like my range and the other guy's range, where even if he has a pair, his pair has almost no, a little bit of value, but not enough. So he's just relying on his open and straight draw. He's calling, you know, like getting two to one, calling so, 300. So what hand are you saying that the button has? Ace, ace 10, 10, 9. 9, queen jack, king jack, king queen are all within his range. I think that's okay. the, the, the hands. And we're beating one... Queen Jack. All right, I'm back. All right, we got Austin that, back. Good. Okay, was that a fair range to assign? Like Austin, Ace my, ten. my are you, well, okay. Was okay. That the the guy, the reg, the competent reg, running at eighteen fourteen, never ha, never is cold calling uh, a shove for three hundred seventy two dollars with like king ten, queen ten. He's just gonna fold those hands. Do yeah, you agree I, with that? <laughs> Yes. I think we can maybe put King Ten in his range as well, uh, but that—that's the only I other hand. I disagree. We, we, I don't even think he's calling preflop with King Ten. A guy playing eighteen fourteen is not calling uh, a raise with King Ten, not especially not a three. But uh, he may with the fish in. Okay. Okay. So I, he has he has ten nine Ace Ten, King Jack Queen Jack and King Queen. Right. Okay. So like. Beating Queen Jack, that's it. And we're losing there, to everything else. Is there any way that he could... There's I don't know, no maybe... flush. If there's a flush draw, then, yeah, obviously there's more hands in his range that he can be calling with. Like a pair and a flush draw, combo draw, stuff like that. But it's King, Queen, Jack, Rainbow. So you guys are both saying you would call? Yeah, this might be kind of a specific stat to ask for, but 
like maybe he could be someone that just three bets out of the blind and for some reason never three bets on the button. Um, but assuming that he has a four percent three betting range from the button, then I would assume we could like eliminate all like sets and I would hope ace king as well from his range. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. When I already said that, we already agreed on that. We're eliminating. Okay. This, like I said, uh, I don't know if you heard. This is his range of hands: is king queen, king jack, queen jack, ace ten, nine ten. I think that's pretty much it. Because we we all agreed he's never cold calling three hundred seventy two dollars at two four with any ten x hand, even if it's king ten. Like what Reg does? Okay, I, so like, I would never call Austin. You would never call, right? Nope. I like. 90 BBs cold with like top pair open and straight draw. Okay, but uh, like I, I think I think our range against the guy who shoved for like seven hundred dollars or six hundred fifty dollars is like well, more I mean, no, important. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. He shoved for the effective stacks are four hundred. I didn't have six hundred. The, the guy. What, the, oh, you didn't have the other guy covered. No, no, I only had uh. Four hundred thirty-three dollars. Start the hand. Button had four hundred. Oh, all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to fold then. You have to fold. Yeah. Th- I thought you stack, had seven hundred. No, I have four hundred thirty-three. Button had four hundred twenty-two. Yeah, the fish had six hundred. Uh, so wait, uh, on the flop, you led. Fish I shoved. Led fish shoved for let's say two hundred eighty for three hundred effective. So it's another two hundred. Oh no, uh, I'm sorry because I raised. Um, uh, like another 260 effective, because I raised to 50 pre. Uh, 270, 260. Uh, button cold calls all in for 372. And then it's up to me. I have to call 260, 270 more. Um, to win, like, a whole I bunch. mean, you got to call that to win, like, almost 1,200, right? I mean, yeah. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm winning... Uh, Eight hundred plus another no, it's two fifty to win like nine fifty, uh, two seventy to win like close to a thousand. So I'm getting like four to one on my call. But my point is like I know we're ahead of the cut cut off shoving range because that guy's kind of a donkey. But I'm saying the nitty reg on the button like what are we ha- ahead of when he cold calls like a huge shove like three hundred seventy two. That's like a hundred BBs pretty much. He's just cold calling. All, all right, all right. Well, well, first of all, like. This is this is the, I don't know I think this is kind of important like for a lot of people like and you you obviously know this but when you say what am I ahead of it doesn't matter what you're ahead of you don't have to be ahead of anything you just have to you know you don't have to be winning at the time <laughs> you know what I mean you just have to have more than Perfect. like twenty all you all you have to have is more than like twenty five percent equity there to call I mean or like twenty yeah. Uh... To call profit. Yeah, yeah. I guess, yeah, I, guess so, I just felt like I'm drawing so it doesn't, four out. I guess okay, yeah. The, so I didn't feel like I had twenty five percent equity. So. Okay, okay, that's Let, different. Yeah, say, it's not like what am I beating or what am I ahead I think, of? I think this is close. If we use combinatorics and just assign like the five hands we gave them, uh, all, all straights, all two pair combinations hands, I, I we probably have what a total of what maybe like five, five and a half outs against his range, something like that, right? Oh, so, yeah. yeah so like then I don't think we have right. Then I don't think we have enough uh, equity to call. I don't think we have the twenty five percent that I need. Getting four to one, right? Yeah. Although at the time, like if I'm like six or eight tabling and this this just happens, um, I don't know if yeah, I like. Was, I don't know if I think of this. I, I, I'm probably just like I have two pair. I just like get it in. But okay. Uh, yeah, not, I should. Change I mean, norm- my initial. Uh, I should change my initial. Uh, my initial statement was auto call, but I, I thought the guy shoved for seven hundred, and you had him. You had no, him covered. Four hundred thirty effective pre. So, but anyways, yeah. I mean, I I'm a caller too. I'm like a station when I play. I don't fold online. <laughs> Joe's seen it. Like I, they have to show me a better <laughs> hand. Yeah. But especially in three bet pot, if you fly, if I flop two pair, I'm never folding. Like yeah, pretty much always. But here so like, I just like well yeah once you break it down like that knit really can't have well, anything. All right, but I'm gonna be embarrassed and you guys are gonna be all over me. I know this is like I hate the ending because I ended up tank folding. The worst part and is I'm, if the button does have queen jack is that one time. That, 
do you think what uh didn't you know where I was going with this? Like the <laughs> bit off shells King Seven off. I mean we had him pegged down, it was like we're always ahead of him, usually ahead. And the button had Queen Jack. So yeah. and I would yeah. and then I would have tripled whatever, I would have won eight hundred bucks and I mean that's being results oriented. But like I said, that's like the only hand we're ahead of. He's gonna have King Queen, King Jack, Ace Ten, Nine Ten there also. Although I don't know, can he even have Ace Ten? Ace Ten suited, have... yeah. Yeah, Ace Ten suited for sure. Really? For sure, yeah. Yeah, if he has Queen Jack suited, why can't he have Ace Ten suited? So, I mean, I'm not full. Cool. Yeah, Queen Jack can make more straights. Sorry. Uh, I mean, you're in position against a fish. You're gonna have both hands. He's gonna have both hands in his range. I guess. So, uh, so yeah. So whatever. If I want to be results oriented, I can say, well, way to go, guys. You guys are right. I was wrong. Whatever. Blah blah blah. But I still felt like I made the right fold. Like the only yeah. hand I beat is Queen Jack there. And just being results oriented, but whatever. It's, I kind of felt sick when I saw that. Uh, just like my brother was like, "Why are you folding?" Because he doesn't understand. <laughs> like you have the best hand. Why are you folding? Yeah. See, wanna... even your brother gets it, and you don't, J.K. I don't. I mean, it doesn't seem. Your brother, who's never played poker, even he gets it. Wow, you don't flop two pair very often. <laughs> Tell I mean, me, get it in. <laughs> just like when he sees the hand, he's like, you have the best hand. Why did you fold? Like, he sees the queen jack and king seven. And I'm like, well, because I thought this guy always has better most of the time. And so, but. Well, yeah, okay. yeah. Um, two things I'd like to say. Um, one, I said I would insta call, but I, I thought the guy had six, you had him covered. Um, and the money you're going to win from him in the side pot. Regardless of even if you only have 20% equity or whatever in the main pot, you're probably a big favorite in the side pot, especially, you know, if he has king seven. Right. You know, you no, can I a misunderstanding on your part. You should tell um, I had extra money, I guess. I don't fish. know what I would do in that situation. And uh, secondly, uh, I mean, who knows? Yeah, I, I think the other point, the other point is like, you don't have to be ahead, ahead, but you just you just have to be getting the right price. I mean, you can yeah. be a three to one dog, but getting four to one on your money, and you still have to gamble. Um, right. I agree. That's an important lesson for like a lot of people to learn, though. Yeah, I agree. So, um, Austin, I just want to ask you, like, when you multi-table, you, you said this before, you don't really break down all the math and stuff. Is it just more feel based? Well. <laughs> Okay, I, I don't want to go so far as say I'm just like a field based player, but uh, like yeah, that's insulting, Jake. <laughs> yeah, <wait, wait. laughs> I play on field. Right, internet, right, internet well, guy. I mean, I mean no, yeah. but there's some certain there's a decent amount of truth to that, for, especially when you're ten tabling, eight tabling stuff like that. Like you said, you don't have the time to like write all this down, like how we just broke it down, all yeah, the like, combinations and equities like, and stuff. Like a lot of times, what I'll do is I'll just. Uh, like after the hand happens, I'll mark it in my uh, my software and just like review it later. But uh, like at the time, I don't know if I would like be able to break down the button's range that extensively. Like I would just probably assume like, okay, he probably has ace king and ace queen or something crazy here, or, like king ten, even if he might not. Um, so I feel like I would almost like assign his range such that I can call him. Like, I, I would be more biased. I, I would give him a wider range than he probably actually has just because there's other stuff going on and I have maybe like three seconds to make this decision. So I'll be like, so okay. You're, you're, okay. So you're looking for reasons to call. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> like I have air in a three bet pot, multi-way. Um, I'm getting like a bajillion to one. He probably has a wide range I call. <laughs> it's probably what would go through my head at the time. <laughs> Plus it's, online. Uh, yeah. Plus it's online. Everyone's bluffing. Everyone Anything over three to one is like a billion to one in my head. That's true. Yeah. yeah well, true. I mean, I was getting through four to one on this call, and I guess you guys would have snap called and been right. But whatever. That's just being results oriented. Um, I want to actually touch up on one more hand before we uh, wrap up. I thought this is hand. This is deeper stack. This is three six. I want. Uh, the turn play is interesting here. It's a. Uh, the three six hand, um, 
I'll just say it really quick. And this is deep stack poker is pretty freaking hard when you're really sitting really deep, 200 BBs deep, yeah. uh, especially against like good online players. So even live, it's hard when you're. I mean, Joe has a lot of experience playing really deep, so he may know how to play this hand better than I did. I think I screwed this hand up. Um, so we're just bashing my play today. That's pretty much <laughs> what it is. Um, okay, so under the gun raises to $18. This is six max. We're playing three six. Um, he has 850 bucks. I have 1800. So I'm running okay. pretty well. Uh, he's running at 30, 27, 17, which is pretty high. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm right behind him with two queens. You can make a case for three betting. Flatting is fine too, I think. Um, three betting is probably the standard choice, but it's kind of awkward. I don't want to get in like 850 bucks. How many BBs is that? Like 140 BBs pre with queens against under the guns range, right? I don't think it's yeah. a pretty good spot. So I just flatted, and there was this fish in the small blind, but I think it was more because of our stack size. It's kind of weird. I flatted. Uh, everyone folds. The flop comes, 8-4 deuce with two diamonds. I don't have a diamond in my hands. I have the queen of spades, queen of hearts. He bets $28 into a $45 pot. I call, turns a 10 of diamonds, so there's three diamonds. There's $100 in the pot. He bets $67. Now, this is where I take like a kind of unorthodox line, and probably a bad line too. I make it 142 Raise. just to like kind of set up. Yeah, could just kind of set up my shell down because I don't want him bombing like... 180, uh, like 200 or 250, and I'm like, what do I do? And like, and plus, you know, if a diamond rolls off on the river, he can bluff me off queens easily. So I make it 142, and he tanks and makes it 340, and I fold. So yeah, I, I was just about to say when you when you told me you raised, like, especially if he's a 30 27, um, I feel like he's more likely, like, he definitely could be spazzing with like ace x with the ace of diamonds there. Um, yeah, he can spaz with a lot when you raise. Yeah, yeah, he could. I don't know. Maybe he is. I mean, I hated my line here, but my question is, like, do you guys, what do you think of, like, raising the turn to kind of, like, charge their draws and then setting up your own shell down in position? Uh, I mean, it's usually a play I don't advocate. Uh, there's actually a term for it, which I found out. It's called the freeze play. Basically, um, like raising turn in position with the weak to moderate shell down hand in order to take the lead, freeze the out of position opponent, and check behind the river. That's basically the definition of it. Okay. Um, I've never I, heard that term wrote, before, but I like it. Uh, yeah, and I wrote down some more notes. It's not necessarily the best play because a good opponent can jam over it, putting you in a wretched spot. And you're often shutting down potential dirty barrels that you can properly call. Mm -hmm. and forcing your opponent to only continue with hands that beat you when you raise. But it's okay, it's good to freeze people when you have no idea what the river tendencies of your opponent are, and it's much cheaper than calling the river. So like I said, had I called here, and now he bombs like 250 or 200 on the river, what do I do? Like if the river's a blank, um, I don't know. I mean, I you mean, could close your eyes and call, yeah. but... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> it's not the greatest spot, but um, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably prefer that play more if if he was maybe a little nittier. Um, if I if I didn't think he had any like spash potential in him, but if he's playing a thirty twenty seven, um, it's just call call call. I think against yeah against uh, like a good tough player like that. Um, uh, yeah, that's what I would say is call call call. Um, I mean, certain rivers we would fold, like a diamond river. Um, the the reason why I did it, I was just thinking, like, he could have, like, a random diamond, and I want to charge him, and, you know, like, and yeah. I don't want to get buffed off. If a diamond did roll off, I just kind of want to set up my shell down price myself, and we're deep, too. Like, uh, yeah, I do. I like doing that, um, and, yeah, the freeze play, it's, it's not something, like, I don't know. You don't see it very often, um, but I, yeah, it's it's helpful in spots like this. Uh, it's more so, yeah, in spots like against decent, like good opponents um, that you're very deep and and I think yeah, this is like and it's kind of important when you're very deep with someone um, and like on the flop or something. If someone's to if someone was gonna like bet and you have like top pair, but like in let's say let's say a hand like eight nine and the flop comes like 
you know, three, four, eight, um, and you're against like a really good opponent and you're very deep, like those are spots I don't mind just raising on the flop and just kind of ending it. Like you're just kind of trying to, especially against opponents who you know are going to constantly barrel against you and put you in like really tough situations. I don't mind like just taking away control of the pot from him there on the Mm -hmm. flop. Um, On the turn, like, yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, you, you kind of price your own showdown. Uh, but, yeah, and, like, in a spot like this, I don't know. It doesn't seem like – so I don't know. I don't like mind it. I don't mind it. I really uh, don't mind it, three bets, We have to fold to a three bet. He makes it 340 after I make it 140. You just have to yeah. fold. Um, or do we I don't you know. Call? I mean, I don't know. Just like, hey, you don't have whatever. a diamond, do you? Uh, no, that's why. If I have a diamond, I'm just calling the turn because because I have redraw outs. Uh, but I don't have a diamond. That's why I was more inclined to do this stupid freeze play. But but I, I usually think it's bad. Uh, I think like what Joe said, there's some merit to it when you're much deeper, because especially against an aggressive player where he f- puts you to tough decisions later on, is just to try to um, kind of like define hands early on and save money. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, normally we don't want to make plays to like know where we stand, but I think when we're really deep in the guy's aggro, uh, yeah, I can see the merit to that. But here we're like 145 BBs deep. It's not like super deep, but I don't know. I'm just like, I, I hate raise folding and over pair, not seeing like, and when a guy three, but it just, because it, I'm turning my hand into a bluff pretty much. And I tell everybody, don't ever do that. And then, you know, I do it myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. But, no, yeah, but, I mean, yeah. I, don't think, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't uh, know. I mean, it, I it, it would be my first option, but um, I guess in some situations it's... Uh, do you, I, I mean, have you play. ever used it? Have you ever done the freeze play, Austin? I mean, <laughs> I, I didn't know of the term freeze play until just right now. Um, I What's actually time? looked it up. It was just online. So I want to ask Austin about that Queen Nine hand. Queen Nine. All right, we're running short on time, but we'll get it. And I don't think the guy that quad jacks, whatever. All right, okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. This is a brief <laughs> hand I want to ask Austin about. So it's like five way limp. This is a live one three no limit game, and there's five limpers in front of you, and you have Queen Nine offsuit on the button. Someone post- posted this in the uh, Stackham forums. Um. So now there's five limpers. You have queen nine offsuit on the button. And so you limp for three bucks. Totally okay. fine, right? Mm-hmm. Now the blinds are in. It's like seven, eight way action, whatever. And the flops, um, nine, seven, five with seven, five of spades. And you have the nine of spades in your hand. Okay. And now. Actually, I think that was wrong, Joe, but that's fine. It's queen nine with the nine of heart or something. He doesn't have the nine of spade, but I think it's almost irrelevant. But go ahead. No, I think that's very relevant. He doesn't have the nine of spade. It was nine, seven of spades on the flop, five of clubs. So the nine of spade is on the flop. And so. Anyways. All right, so. Okay, so. Oh, the nine of spades is on the flop. You You have queen nine. But, okay, okay. The nine of spades is on the flop. Um, so anyways, now, um, one of the under the gun guys leads out for, uh, or the small blind bets, 15, big blind folds, under the gun calls, uh, middle position, two middle position guys call and the cutoff calls. So there's, um, small blind okay. leads and now three callers for 15 and you're on the button with queen nine, um, with no spade. And, and the question's like, what do you do here? It's a limped pot, um, and everyone's pretty much like over. Uh, I think a lot of the guys are like four four fifty to five hundred dollars deep, so like one hundred fifty big blinds deep at least. Um, um, yeah, that's a tough spot. Like. So like you have top pair, right? Um, yeah, but it is a limped pot. Cool, you don't really want to. You don't really want to go broke in a limped pot here, right? Yeah. Uh, um. I mean, I guess you call, but there's just a lot of turns that you're probably just gonna be folding. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um. 
Well, like anyway, any there was some seven, five, six, eight. Um, obviously, any like king or ace. I don't know. Like you not having any sort of draw in like a huge multi-way pot um, isn't the greatest. Like, I mean, I guess you can't fold. I guess I just call and I'm not too happy about it. I, I hope to to like bank a queen and make my life easier, but I don't know. Yeah, um, that's kind of what I said. Like, our hand's way too good here to fold. Like, we can't fold, even though it is a limp pot. Like, one of the coaches even said, you know, I don't mind folding on this flop, and I, I just think our hand's way too strong. Like, we have definitely more than enough equity against like the field. Like, only one guy can really have us beat there. I would think. Um, in that spot, maybe, oh, I mean, small blind. yeah, like only really the guy who bet can really have us beat. There's um, just, there's just a lot of bad turns. Like you're just, uh, yeah, of course there's a lot of bad turns. I mean, there's not too, you know, I don't think it's going to be, it's going to be easy to get to a showdown or easy to win the pot or anything, but I think we have more than enough equity going forward that we have to at least call there. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, so, I don't know, that was kind of the argument that a couple guys, and I said even a hand like Jack-9 or 10-9, I'm um, you can almost make an argument for folding those hands, um, but a hand like Queen-9. I mean, I think if you're calling Queen-9, you have to be calling Jack-9 and 10-9 too. Like, the differences between those aren't that much. I think I'd actually rather have 10-9. Then no, that does, no, no, that's, that's not right. right. Yeah. That's wrong because people you are gonna have. have like, you, want the better, you want the better kicker. There, there might be nines out there, nine x's out there. You want no, it's not because kicker. you want the better kicker. It's because if you it's make this. two pair, you don't want like hands like jack eight getting there and double gutters on the flop. And uh, if you have jack nine now, like ten eight gets there and and like you yeah, I mean the queen's like a clean out. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I guess to make the best hand. Yeah. Okay, I think, well, I mean, I think we're both I was just right. thinking if, if, you had, if, you had 10 nine, be, if you had 10 9, there would be less gross turns. Like, an 8 would be cool, too. Um, no, that's not true. Because. No, and nothing gives us the nuts. Yeah. yeah, nothing gives yeah. us the nuts. Like, yeah. you always want to be drawing to the nuts in, like, a big multi way pot. And, like, a queen there pretty much, you know, gives us. Yeah, I guess. Close to the nuts. I, I, I just think when you get, like, four people in front of you, there's going to be at least one or two more nines out there. So I, I think the kicker is going to play so more often than not here. Yeah, okay. you, there's a bet in like three callers to you. Who Are you saying you're the only person with the nine here? That's kind of far-fetched. I, would think. I think the biggest reason is is because you're out you're to improve. Mm, I don't know. You're only going to hit your out like like less than one out of five, like really. I know, but in a big limp pot like that, you always want to be drawing to the nuts. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it's more likely the board's going to roll out like dirty where you have to fold a turn or the board's going to roll out clean, like a, a deuce three a pairs of the board, a river four where a kicker is going to matter. I mean, let's just say the board isn't great either, but but, let's just hold on a second. My computer's about to die. Hold on. Yeah. (laughs) All right, well, we might just wrap it up without you then, Austin. Yeah, we got to uh, wrap okay. it up, Austin. <laughs> All, right, All right, so fine. it was great talking to you guys. The this hand. All right, uh, if you cut out, what's your Twitter handle, really quick? At, At crispy. crispy. Yeah. Where did the crispy come from? For this, uh, I'm curious where did it come from. Uh, honestly, I'm not sure. I just like came up with the name one day, randomly, and it just kind of stuck. Like the first couple people that saw it, they're like, "Oh, that's a cool name," and so it just kind of stuck. And Austin's a man; he can get away with. <laughs> do that, dude. I mean, <laughs> and you were like the Roshan Bow Champ one year at the World Series. We forgot to cover that. Yeah, I was. I uh, oh, his claim to fame. Yeah, I got. You won the five hundred dollar buy in. Uh, yeah, World Series I got, event. I got drunk and won ten k playing rock paper scissors one night. That was pretty cool. <laughs> um, Who were you up against in the finals? Was it Phil Gordon or? No, it was. Uh, well, there's Earth? a bunch of full tilt, full tilt no. guys. No. I I I don't remember. I'm okay, sorry. well you want 10k in a very skill based game. Yeah, game. super skill based. No uh, call involved whatsoever. Um, yeah, but yeah, it was um, a lot of fun. All right, well, I think that was the last time they had the Rochambeau, right? They didn't have it. It was so I'm, I'm still the reigning champion. You're the reigning 
Rochambeau champ at the World Series. Okay, I, awesome, I, I, Austin. It was good having you on. Um, just a quick end result on that last hand. Um, hero raised, got it. A hero raised, and like five people called. And I don't. I think they ended up checking it down. And hero won with queen nine. The turn was a ten river brick, and really? hero won with queen nine. No yeah, turn other, ten river jack. What? Yeah, and he won with, with queen, queen nine. nine? <laughs> wow. Did yeah. you say he won? Some, no, I don't think he yeah, won. Of course he did. Someone had nine eight. And everybody else had draws. Oh. Like that wasn't that they didn't hit a ten or a jack. Well, turn ten so, yeah, river the, jack, dude. That's that's what yeah. it says on the forums. So nine eight won, beats him. Nine eight doesn't beat him, does it? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Is it, Any eight beats oh, him. Oh, maybe nine eight. Won Any the, eight. He lost. He lost the hand, I think. Okay. But he had the best hand on the flop. Oh. So that's what I'm saying. His kicker did play. There was a nine eight hand. So he wow. yeah, nothing wrong with raising with the best hand. Nothing, nothing wrong at all with that. So, <laughs> if you know everyone okay, else's hand, you got the best hand. Go ahead and raise. Just get it all in there, huh? Well, I, I told, I posted like this table sounds really juicy. Lock the doors, throw away the keys. You know, whenever you're in a game like that. So, but all right, it was good having you on today, Austin. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for having for me, guys. I appreciate it. Input, I appreciate it. So, um, this is. Cash play for Quadjax from at Quadjax.com brought to you by Stack and Coaching. Use promo code Quadjax82 for a free day trial at our site, Stack and Coaching. You can see the banner at Quadjax.com. Um, you can follow us on Twitter. I'm at Nicolak Poker. Joe's at Joe Tihan. And Austin, again, is at 2 Crispy. So thanks for listening, guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks. Right. See you guys later.